Hello, I'm Don Crawley from SoundTraining.net, and welcome to this SoundTraining.net Fast Learn video. Today we're doing Cisco ASA Access Control List Basics. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. First of all, what is an access control list? And it's just a sequential list of permit and deny conditions. Each line has one permit and or deny condition on it. I'm going to allow this type of traffic. I'm going to deny this type of traffic. They identify traffic flows, so each line is going to specify from this source to this destination, perhaps this type of protocol, this port number, something like that. And finally, access control lists are applied to interfaces and functions. So you create the list, but it's just floating around out there, not doing anything until you apply it to an interface. So I'm going to say I want to restrict certain types of traffic coming inbound on, say, the outside interface. Or I only want to allow this particular traffic flow across, say, a VPN tunnel. Here are the rules for ACLs. An ACL is comprised of one or more access control entries. These entries are one line in an access list. When a packet encounters an ACL, it's evaluated against each access control entry in sequential order until it matches an entry. Anything that comes after a match is not even evaluated, doesn't even see it. Once it matches an entry, all following ACEs are ignored. And there's an implied deny any at the end of every ACL. Packets that don't match any entries are denied. Another way of thinking about that is anything that's not explicitly permitted is implicitly denied. This is very important when you're dealing with access control lists. Order matters. Always go from most specific to most general. You do it the other way around, you can have what uh, the vendors like to call unintended consequences. We like to call that a, a foobar. Here's an example of something that won't work. Notice that at the very top we have the most general entry going from access list demo deny IP a subnet and then the next line, the next entry, is for an individual host. Well what happens is that a packet from host 10.1.0.1 comes in, it hits that first line and it never makes it to the second line. So that's an example of how not to do it. Here's an example of how to do it. Notice that here we go from most specific to most general. Very simple, but an extremely important concept. Here's an example of configuring an access control list. Let's just go over it point by point. So we'll start with the access hyphen list command. Then we give it a name, demo1. We can call it a number. If you're familiar with numbered lists on a router, it's the same sort of thing. Then the permit or deny condition. In this case, we're going to permit. Next, the protocol type. In this case, TCP, but we could do UDP. We could do IP. We could do ICMP, for example. The source IP address. In this case, it is a subnet, 10.1.0.0 with a 24-bit mask. If you don't understand what a 24-bit mask is and where we came up with that, then maybe you need to go back and review some TCP IP basics. The destination. So this is going to any destination and then at the very end of the list we say equals to www or we could put port 80 in there we could say equal 80 and that's simply going to permit traffic going from that particular source 10.1.0.0 to any destination that's equal to port 80 the next line same thing except notice at the end we say 443 we could put HTTPS if you know the name or you know the number you can use pretty much either one they're fairly interchangeable the other thing I want to point out is when we do a show access list, notice that the output of show access list also includes a little more information. It includes line numbers. Each time you add a line to an ACL, it is appended to the end, and they're numbered sequentially. And also, in a firewall, in a Cisco ASA security appliance, the uh, ACLs are assumed to be extended as opposed to standard. The difference is the same as it is on a router. An extended list can filter on source and or destination IP addresses protocol types, and TCP or UDP port numbers. A standard filters only on the source IP address. It's easy to edit them in a Cisco ASA security appliance compared to a router. Notice in the first example of the output of show access list demo 1, we have two entries. Then we add an entry, and notice that we place it in position 2, line 2, and then in the output of uh, show access list demo 1 after the addition, you'll notice that the former line 2 has been bumped down to line 3. So it's really easy to edit ACLs on an ASA compared to a router. You can remove lines from a list with the famous Cisco no command. Just put no in front of the exact same syntax you used to create the line. We can add time ranges. This is pretty cool. If you want to, say, restrict web traffic so that people can't surf the web while they're working, I'm not sure that that's a good business idea, but just for the 
sake of an example, we create a time range called work week. Work week is just a name that we gave it. We could call it Billy Bob for that matter. But then we specify the type of time range. In this case, it's periodic. There are other options. Use your question mark to see what they are. Weekdays means Monday through Friday, and then we put in the time range itself, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then we use it in an access list. We create the access list, same as always, but at the very end of the list, at the end of the line, rather, we put the time range work week, and that then makes, makes that particular line only in effect during the time specified. We can rename ACLs. Here we use the ACLs list command, and then the former name, the rename statement, and then the new name. So we renamed www underscore restrict to web underscore restrict. This is pretty cool too. Here we can use object groups, which is a lot like uh, in managing user accounts, how you manage users in groups. You put users in groups, and then you apply permissions just once to the group instead of multiple times to each individual user. Same sort of thing here, except that instead of dealing with user accounts, we're dealing with different elements. Uh, for example, a network object group is one or more IP addresses. Could be a full network, could be a subnet, could be an individual host. Protocol objects are things like um, TCP, UDP, IP, ICMP, ICMP object groups. Maybe you only want to allow, oh, say, uh, ICMP send, uh, echo send, and echo reply. Well, this is a way to do it. Basic service object groups, one or more TCP or UDP port numbers, port 80, 443, 53, 22, and so on. And then finally, the enhanced service object group, which is a mix of all of the above. Let's take a look at how we might use it. So here we have an object group that we've created called accounting. <clears throat> we make it a network object group, which means we're going to focus on IP addresses, put in a description to document it, always document, right? Make it easy for you down the road so you can see what, what you were thinking. Then we're going to specify the individual objects. The first one is an individual host at 10.1.0.1. The next one is a subnet at 10.2.0.0, the 24-bit mask. Then we use it in an ACL, replacing the source IP address with the object group. Notice here, access list, demo2, permit, TCP, source, instead of an IP address, we just say object group accounting, and that then applies it to that individual host and that subnet that we specified earlier. When you want to use ACLs, you create the list, and then you have to use the access group statement to apply it. Now, this particular list is one that will allow you to ping and trace route through a firewall from the inside to the outside, which is not allowed by default. A lot of people want to do that, so I just thought, well, I'll use that for the purpose of the demo. And so uh, for this purpose, this is the access control list. It will allow you to ping from the inside to the outside, which could be pretty handy. And then, in order to make it work, you have to enable it on the outside interface. And you do that with the access-group statement. So the name or number has to match what's used in the list. Notice, in this case, access group 101 inbound on the outside interface. Let's go open up PuTTY and actually show you how to do this on a live firewall, which may be a little crazy, but what the heck, we'll live on the edge. All right, we've got PuTTY already open, and we're logged on to the firewall. I've created the access control list in Notepad++, which, by the way, if you don't know about Notepad++, you should. It's a free download, and we're simply going to apply the access control list to the interface. So I'll right-click to put it in place. There it is. Now, we've got the access list, and in fact, if we do the command show access list, oops, the typing sucks, but there we go, you can see that we've got a couple of ACLs, but there's the one in particular, the one numbered 101 that we want. But it's still not doing anything. We have to apply it to the interface, and so to do that, we're going to use the command access-group 101. That name or number has to match what's in the list. Inbound traffic on the interface that we named outside. And now that permits TCP, uh, uh, that permits pings and trace routes through the firewall. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, you may want to download our free PDF companion documentation we've created. It is the companion for the video that you just saw, and it goes into more detail than what we could go into in the video. You can get it for free again at www.soundtraining.net slash asa-access-lists. You may also want to check out our 
new book on the ASA. It's called The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. It's a configuration and management step-by-step -step guide. It's 184 pages, so it's not one of those great big huge thick books that you can never get through. It's got 11 chapters and 56 hands-on exercises to walk you through configuring an ASA from the very beginning with no configuration all the way through some fairly sophisticated configurations like for DMZs. There's four types of VPNs uh, and even uh, configuring it in transparent mode. Also, consider taking our two-day ASA hands-on workshop. It's two days of lab after lab after lab. The details, the description, and course outline are online at www.soundtraining.net slash cisco-asa-training-101. Well, again, I hope this has been helpful for you. It's been my pleasure working with you for the past few minutes. For soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. Have a great IT week.